And here's a couple of pictures, some teasers, if you will, that I've shared on social media and here on the channel a few times. Many people out there have speculated that this is part of the Corvette SUV. That I can tell you is not true, being that we were talking about Corvette SUV today. Let's talk about ZR1. Maybe they cut production early for a 25 like they did back in 2018, and we have an early 26, because coming on the backside of that is going to be the all-new Grand Sport. Stay tuned for more details on that. All right, no long-winded conversation, let's just get to it. <laughs> I'm not even on camera yet. <laughs> You're reading way Ooh. too many comments. <laughs> Welcome to Tech Tuesday. <laughs> Here, you can read mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know what was with that last week, man. It was like early on, it was like had all these people up tight saying, like, you talk too much. <laughs> do you want me just to sit here and stare at the camera? And they're like, what are we watching this video for? The guy's just staring at us. He's not talking. <laughs> all right. I just like having a conversation with you guys. So uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Tech Tuesday. Let me just, I always like to talk about something else other than your questions real quick. The amazing response to Sunday's video talking, and I just was having a conversation. I didn't dramatize that. A lot of guys on YouTube would have made this a big drama. I just was just talking about what's going on in the marketplace with back yeah. out orders. And one thing I didn't talk about, there's and a number of things you guys said in the comments, and yes, one guy was texting me. He said, hey man, did you delete my comment? Yes, I did. Uh, my prerogative, my channel. I don't put commercials in the middle of the video, but if you get a little too nasty, uh, I, I let you guys have a lot of freedom, but when it gets a little, yeah, and then yeah, that's where I draw the line. Anyways, one thing I didn't talk about, and it's a minor situation that happens once in a while, and that is in transit damage. Sometimes is why yeah. people would actually back out of their custom sold order. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, that's stuff that we have to deal with, that's uh, the transporter moving too fast sometimes under the pressure that they're under to yeah. get cars to us, so that's unfortunate. And sometimes people say, hey, I don't know, looking at the, the damage, I don't know, I don't know, you know. And they'll ask me if, it's, if I'm involved, I'll tell you what I really think. Sure. And then, okay, great, fix that. And I told you guys many times over, you gotta be a little flexible. There's no perfect Corvette. I had issues with my car. I took delivery of the Corvette Museum. Yeah, those guys are moving fast too down there, the men and women uh, at Bowling Green Assembly. So, I mean, sure. you gotta be a little flexible in it. And at the level of the car that we're getting at the price point that we're getting, I mean, we've gotta be a little flexible. That's my opening for today's Tech Tuesday. Some amazing, creative, fun, great pictures in the beautiful ride segment. That's coming up at the end of your questions and hopefully good answers for you guys in today's show. One thing that I actually teased and promoted that I don't know if we're actually going to have, we're recording a day in advance, I don't know if we're going to have that. I'm consulting an expert to get you guys good feedback on putting PPF over the factory stripes on your C8 and will that cause an issue taking that off one, two, three years down the road. I haven't gotten that segment yet. It may be in tonight's show. If it's not, I apologize. I'll make sure we have that for you guys next week. We both got quite a bit here. Some, yeah. some novels you guys wrote, but good feedback and I want to share that with everybody. Thank you for taking the time to write and send these in. Do you want to? You're still rambling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, shit. All right. All right, buddy. Go right ahead. I'm All sorry. Right. <laughs> this one comes from Richard. <laughs> says, hi, Rick. I'm taking my 14 Z51 Stingray back to the dealer in Dallas where I purchased this to have them change the oil crankcase and the transmission this Saturday. I'm checking, uh, oh, I'm attaching a picture of what I think are scoops for tracking that probably came with the car new and the dealer probably put them on to make it ready. My car has 7,600 miles on it. When I purchased it 18 months ago, I now have 8,900 miles on it. I'm worried these are the wind scoops for the tracking that you and Chuck advise not to leave on the car due to scooping up trash and starting fires. I found the original owner through a link. He left his name plate on the car and I spoke with him. He said it was a, a garage queen never tracked. I could probably take these off, but I don't want to take off an important component by accident and I don't think I can trust Classic to know what they need 
to be there since the dealer didn't sell the car. So can you tell me what you think, whether I should remove or remove them or not, please. Thank you so much. First, don't confuse C8, which we talk about. That's really is the driving the market, and I'm glad right. we got a C7 question. This is C7. It's totally different. Go ahead. Right. Well, this looks like a picture of the rear of the car. It looks like this is the fuel tank here on the left-hand side. Yes. These scoops were actually put on from the factory. These don't go back to the brake ducts. These aren't for braking. These are for uh, radiators and stuff in the back of the car, they scoop the air in for that cooling. So Trans Transmission cooler. Transmission or diff cooler, stuff like that. So no, you want to leave those on. Did the only they, thing that was Yeah, cracked, remember the kit? Yeah, yeah I, it come with a kit that you had to put brake, you had to wire in some plates to the, the rotors to yes. help with the brake cooling. Yeah, to give a little bit of airflow around the, the yeah, brake. Yeah, different things like, like that. that. Which nobody ever put on. No, but the, <laughs> this brake duct is factory and it, it's no way related to tracking, so leave it on there. Yeah, and furthermore, it doesn't drop down below the actual body line of the car like it does in right. C8. So no. you're going to be fine there. Yep. Good question, actually. Thank you for watching and sending that in. I do appreciate that. Here's something that's pretty cool, how you guys respond to us on Tech Tuesday. Thank you so much. This guy's coming in here. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, this, Anyways, this guy's coming from Iowa to have him service <laughs> his Corvette. I love it. He says, Rick, I met you at Paragon last year. What we see in the channel is what we see in person. You took the time to talk to everybody, including my friend and myself. I could not be more impressed with you. Your passion is truly infectious. The Corvette community is better with you and Chuck in it. Thank you for that. We yep. do appreciate that. I've got an appointment, in fact, in May with your service department to have Chuck work on my car, and I'm going to drive the 550 miles to do so. It'll be the 7,500-mile service, and I'm very excited. At th now, listen to this, guys. This is concerning a little bit. And I'm glad he sent this in. At 3,500 miles, I had my selling dealer change the oil. I did not claim the first service, which you're going to do when he gets here. Right. I always have my PD. This is the key to this, uh, this whole letter. I have my PDR always recording, so I have proof of unexpected situations. What I heard was sometimes extremely funny and things I couldn't say in front of my mother. It was priceless. The same dealer did the warranty work on my door panel about six months ago. When I got the car back, the SD card was completely erased and even reformatted. The dealer commented to me, ah, it's no big deal. But I lost the priceless conversations when giving the ride to my grown children. How happy they were for me as they grew up with my 50-year Corvette passion. Of the 11 Corvettes I've had, this is the only one, the only one that I bought new. It took, it took retirement and me selling my John Deere tractor to buy it. It was a big deal to me. My question is to you guys, could this be a glitch or was it intentional? This is Tom in the middle of Iowa. I've never seen a glitch that wiped out the whole SDM card. No, and there's just a couple of options that you can do and you can wipe it out. So were they... I'm assuming from what you're describing, they were trying to hide something, okay? Sounds like maybe. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, I mean, you could have just manually, even though it's in automatic record mode, you can manually turn it off, just hit stop, stop recording. I mean, you can do that. You can erase individual files. They're dated and time stamped. But to do what that did and those implications and just the reaction that, oh, it's not a big deal. Yeah, you're exactly right. It is a big deal. So I'm sorry that happened to you. So. Um, not really much you can do to prevent that. Uh, I just wish you well in the future. I know that uh, Chuck and I will probably do a little something for you on your PDR when you get here. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I seen a YouTube video. A yeah. guy was having his C8 picked up for service, had his PDR recording. The guy left his house. The guy that was supposed to take it back to the dealer left his house. Instead of going back to the dealer, went and picked up his girlfriend. They okay. went joyriding, yeah. and his his girlfriend was smarter than he was because oh, she right. said, "I think we're being recorded." <laughs> yes, and the guy said, "Nah, that's just a radar detector. We're fine." She's like, "I really think we're being. I don't worry about it." Right. And yes, the PDR is recording the whole time. Well, need to say he won't go back there. There's been a number of those and where oh, guys yeah. taking the cars and they're out there just you know not only joyriding but uh, extreme speed driving and stuff sure. like that. And the PDR so again, the point being, sorry that happened to you. There's no way of preventing yep. it. You just got to put the trust in the guys that are working on your car. I don't do it. I've been to Pahrump. I've driven on the track. I'm good. Yeah, don't need to do it in your car. No, absolutely not. All right, this one comes from Terry. It says, good afternoon, Rick. My husband watches your YouTube show all the time, so I thought I'd reach out to you myself and ask a few questions. We currently have a 23 Corvette Stingray Rapid Blue like yours. We love it. 
had it, uh, we love it, and had it at Ron Fellows Performance School. Cool. Such a great experience. My husband dreams about purchasing a Z06. I'm trying to talk him into it. Oh. We found one. It's a 2023 Z06 convertible, exactly matches what he wants. I called and was told that the original warranty had expired because it was traded in before the six month purchase date. Okay, it's not necessarily, yeah, it's expired, but it's blocked. Correct. Because it was Thank traded you. in. That's exactly right. Yeah, so it's not that it expired, it's, it's been blocked by GM, mm -hmm. has no warranty. Says, if this is, if this is a, a go. go for us, what would you suggest purchasing one? And if so, would it be reasonable price to spend on one? Always a little nervous, could be paying too much for one. Any advice or suggestions as far as what we look for since it's used and suggestions about warranty would greatly be appreciated. And this is from Terry, which is a female. Yes. All right, sweetheart. For her Absolutely. Very, very good question. Yep. And as we talk about how C8 evolves and more are coming into the used marketplace, especially with Z06, this is set up for the manufacturer, like Chuck said. It's not expired. That's blocked. And once it's blocked, it's on there for the life of the car. The problem you have now is you're limited. Most of the good warranty companies, aftermarket warranty companies, won't put an aftermarket warranty on that car because they see that it has a black warranty. There's some companies out there that'll do a warranty. Then you have to be careful about, is it one of those guys that you have to pay for the repair and the chase down the reimbursement? Uh, is it only good at their shop and not good nationwide? So you really have to do your due diligence on who will cover that car in an extended warranty situation and with C8, as complicated as it is, and the things that pop up that we share here on the channel, I really think you need an extended warranty on this car, especially at oh, that absolutely. level. You're gonna keep the car, you're gonna enjoy the car, and you don't wanna get to the point where you gotta, you gotta shell out $30,000 to, to fix something if something major happened to the car. Right. Uh, that's, that's why you get an extended warranty in case something happens. In this situation, you, you've really gotta be careful. Absolutely. Yeah, anything, I'm sorry, anything else to add to that? Um, I mean, no, kind of, just kind of being, where you're going with that? No, just be extremely careful. Like I said, the GM blocked the warranty on the car. So right. anybody that looks at it can see that the warranty is blocked, not expired. It's got, when you bring it up in, G, in Global Connect, it's got a big red box that says blocked warranty. Yeah, the service drive will look at that, he'll look at that, and yep. then all of a sudden if you have a warranty issue, they're going to say, um, Sorry, folks, we can't fix this under warranty yeah. because XXX, as we just discussed. Yeah. Okay, Tech Tuesday continues. Thanks again for watching, listening, and sending in your questions. Rick, I'm 83 years old. I'm driving a 21 Corvette convertible. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, and we've started to tease a little bit more that there's a Grand Sport C8 coming. Can you please let me know your thoughts? This is from John. And John, yes, I have been teasing it uh, because I've had some really good intel, uh, much of which I've got to sit sit on. This I will, I will throw the, and I think I've said this before, anyways, let me just give you a little nugget. When the Grand Sport comes out, there's gonna be a surprise with that car. And I've already stated, some of the people from GM have contacted me, they said, hey, we heard you talk about this and this and this, and they agreed with me. When the Grand Sport comes out, it will be the rock star of C8, it will outsell everything, everything. That car's gonna be, just wait, it's coming, anyways. God bless you, John, at 83, driving a Corvette. I love you to death. We've actually got a send-off pat coming up, guys. 85, I did send a card to in California. Uh, but I think uh, you're gonna see ZR1 first, and that looks like it's a little bit later launch. And then Grant Sport is supposed to follow from the intel that I've gotten. So um, two, maybe three years away, but probably two full years before you hear any real conversations from Chevrolet confirming a Grant Sport. So hang in there, buddy. God bless you. Drive it every day, man. All right, this comes from Jamal. It says, so I have a periodic issue on my 21 C8 where I turn off the car, but the vehicle still believes that it's on. I, I'm not quite sure what you mean by still believes it on. Is the car not shutting down? The engine's still running? The dash still staying lit up? Uh, I'm not quite sure what he means by still staying on. Right. So it won't allow me to do anything. Open the trunk, front, trunk, front, turn the car off all the way or do anything. The only solution I found is unplug the battery, then plug it right back in. This okay. happens randomly every so often. Have you covered this before? And is there a solution? We haven't, I've never seen it. Uh, whatever's going on, I'd probably take it to the dealer and have them check it out. Right, to go to the... 
when you disconnect the battery, you wipe out all the history trouble codes that might be going on in this vehicle. Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, go to the extreme. To, to, to It's not even easy to get to the battery. Right. You know, it's like, uh, and I get sometimes with my key fob, and I don't know if it's if it's the key fob, you've changed the batteries. Um, I've got this casing on that I got from Paragon, and I love this carbon fiber, but sometimes I'll turn the car off, and I'm sitting right in the driver's seat, and it says it doesn't recognize the key fob. So yeah. is that kind of what Jamal was talking about yeah, where it doesn't yeah. recognize and then the car is still kind of staying on because then you got to hit the, the start stop button again to actually go into uh, shutting down the car type of thing so maybe need a little bit more information what's going on but certainly don't disconnect the battery get it to the dealership all right this one comes from Russ and this is just a comment on a couple of Sundays ago video again great engagement uh, almost 400 comments on that regarding a Corvette SUV so basically, Russ here from Sarasota, Florida was just commenting on that video. And I wanted to share that with you guys, kind of keep that going, because again, that's great conversation that we like to be conversation starters of when it comes to Corvette. My question to you was, if they made, <coughs> when they make a Corvette SUV, would you buy one? And he says, Rick, absolutely, I would love one. I've got a 23 Black Tahoe RST on 22s, and I would love one to match my brand new 24 Rapid Blue. My two daughters both can ride in daddy's blue vet then, by the way, and um, this is before we started doing Tech Tuesday again. I said, Rick, you haven't done a Tech Tuesday in a while. My daughters keep asking, uh, where's Rick? We haven't seen the show in a while. Here's a couple other pics of the kids. Thanks again, buddy, for you and Chuck and all that you do. Russ, thank you for watching and sending in the feedback. Uh, I'm actually looking a little bit more forward to a Corvette SUV than I thought I was. So stay tuned on that. We've, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming, guys. We really do. All right. Trunk in the front. Wow. This one comes from Dale. It says, uh, Rick and Chuck, will you tell us what the correct oil for C8 is? It used to be Mobile One Dexos 2. Now the Mobile One Dexos 2 says European formula. I've heard that we should use Mobile One Supercar, but it does not say Dexos 2 on the box. I think, it's rec I think the recommendation now is to use the supercar, and it is referred to as Dexos R. I've never heard of Dexos. Look, Dexos, uh, GM did back in the late part of the C6s. Yeah. And there was such an uprising from the Corvette owners. <laughs> there was. They didn't want to use Dexos in their Corvettes because it had always been mobile. So GM flipped back to Mobile One. And yes, the correct, the correct oil for a C8 is a 040 Mobile One supercar. And it says so right on the box, right on the bottle. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I know. It's, and the Dexos is a blend right. uh, of that synthetic, and people were just flipping out. But yeah, you're okay to, to, to put in the old the old 040. It's backward compatible. Now they just sure. changed everything over to supercar oil. Do not use the European blend. Oh, thank no, you. No. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. don't. All right, here's a quick one from Ruben. Uh, not sure if we'll be able to answer this or not. He says, Rick and Chuck, uh, have you guys seen the repeated problems of AC leaks? On the C8 Corvette, my 22 Corvette has lost refrigerant for the third time. My dealership can't seem to locate the leak. It's like chasing a rabbit in a hole trying to find stuff in these C8 sometimes. Well, I mean, the motor's in the back, the compressor's in the back, they got radiators and lines <laughs> that run the length of the vehicle, just like the coolant lines, so, yeah. And they're all encased and enclosed. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to C8. looked under your C8, you can't see nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's great. Uh, that's a tough one. You're just going to have to keep digging on that one, man. But you've not seen, you've not I haven't anybody. seen any issues, Yeah, no. we've had a lot of cars come through here. And right. surprisingly, some of these issues you guys are talking about, we've not seen. So, sorry, nope. I don't really have any other clear-cut comment for you uh, other than that. But, uh, yeah, keep digging on that, buddy. All right, this comes from Tony. It says, I really enjoy the interview from November 2019 in the SUV video. Oh, Bob Lutz. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could listen to that gentleman speak for hours at a time. Yes. Thank you for inserting that, even though I'd rather buy another Stingray instead. Possible question for Tech Tuesday or not. In your opinion, from five years ago when you had a cool stash, you still, <laughs> <laughs> cool stash, still that you would not cover your C8 until two months from date of production. I asked because I'm getting the car PPF ceramic coated for delivery in mid-March and was going to cover it because my HOA doesn't have garage and I live in rainy South Florida is one question. Right, and that's we were talking about car covers. That's an old, old video. 
and was really primarily geared toward uh, darker color cars, cooler climates, and sealing that up entirely at the beginning uh, of the car coming off the carrier and brand new in its inception. Uh, the paint process is so different and so much better now at Bowling Green Assembly. You can put your PPF on now, you can put your ceramic coat on now, you're great. But still with darker color cars, uh, you know, there's still a, a breathing component when they're doing that, but putting that cover on and there's just no air getting to that around it and you've sealed it up, that's really was our concern in regards to the cover. The other stuff that you're talking about, you should be fine and dandy. Everybody's been doing it and there's not been any repercussions whatsoever. Okay, the other question is, once the break-in period is over, is it safe or would it hurt the transmission to go into the yellow warning RPMs when shifting or is it best not to do so? Hell no. <laughs> once you see the break-in period, yeah. drive it like you stole it. That's right, man. That's right. I mean, when you get into the red line, that's where you got to worry about right. you know, hurt, hurting the car a little bit, but that's that's what she's for. I mean, my goodness, just uh, if you're just doing the regular transmission, it's going to shift by itself and keep you out of trouble. But if you're doing paddle shifts, you got to you gotta pay attention just a little bit closer, that's all. Yeah. Absolutely. You got another one there, partner? Yes, sir. Okay. Comes from Chuck. Says, after searching for several months, my wife and I recently purchased our dream retirement car, a 2017 C7 Long Beach Red Stingray with an A8 transmission. While doing research on the purchase, I happened upon Tech Tuesday with Chuck plus Coffee with Conti. I thoroughly enjoy your YouTube presentations. I know you've been focusing on the C8 models, but the question deals with the problem related to the automatic transmission in the C7. As of yet, I've not noticed any transmission shuttering. There is, it, it's a bit over 37,000 on the car, but I plan on getting the transmission fluid flushed. So my question is, is Mobile One Synthetic LV ATV HP the correct fluid replacement? Should the local dealership be aware of this correct fluid to use? They should be. Where they are not, I can't tell you. Right. Uh, is there a service bulletin that specifies the, the address of this fluid? Yes. The transmission shutter that we speak of came out in a bulletin where they were revising the fluid for the third third time yep. and this is the only fluid that they recommend going in those transmissions and if you take it somewhere and they flush it with anything other than this transmission fluid you're actually creating a problem yep. and it's not a, I have to explain this all the time to uh, even my used car manager it's not a transmission problem it's a fluid problem what was happening the fluid was absorbing moisture and that was causing the shutter this mobile one full synthetic LV ATF repels the water so the transmission don't shutter and as the transmission comes up to temperature it just exits out the vent so even with this shutter it's not a transmission problem it's a fluid problem a good point so if they put the wrong fluid in your car they are creating a problem mm -hmm. so yeah you want to make sure that the dealer knows that they're supposed to be using the mobile one lv atf hp that is the correct fluid okay and he also says, other than replacement of the transmission filter, should anything else be taken care of at the same time regarding to the transmission? Well, I don't know. You kind of contradicted yourself in the first paragraph. You talked about flush. Second, when you talk about replacing, changing the filter. So other than I never change filters, because here's what happens. If you just doing a transmission filter, they're going to take the pan down, replace the filter, put the pan back on, and put in the four, four and a half quarts that you've lost. Right. Where the transmission flush, you actually hook the machine in line and you flush the entire system, the torque converter, the transmission, everything gets flushed. So That's better to do it like that, yes. right? Yeah. And don't even worry about the filter. Right. Because that filter is supposed to be really a, uh, essentially a lifetime filter. Yeah. Unless there's a problem with the, with sure. the transmission. Okay. Yeah. So do the flush as a true flush yep. for, the, for the C7. And make sure they're using the correct fluid. And there's a lot of tech support through Chevrolet to help these guys, help you guys. Sure. Um, so hopefully through all of us working together and just sharing that information that you have a seamless process and a, and a proper repair done to your car when you go in, wherever you go, okay? Yep. All right, man, a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I, again, I love having, and you stopped me from rambling, so it could have been longer, uh, but I love talking with you guys. I love getting these emails and the feedback. Uh, we learn from you. We have a lot of fun with you guys. Thank you for doing so. Email address is on the screen. If you got a question, you got a problem, uh, you want to know how to use something on your car, email that in. Chuck and I will do that and answer those every time that we do a Tech Tuesday. The goal is to do it every Tuesday, but every right. time we do one, we'll address as many as we can. And we'll share as many cool looking cars as we can, like we got right now. 
your beautiful rides. Right on cue.